Welcome back, my fellow to begin to oxygen not included. So today I'm going to be continuing to work on the space base up here. In the last episode here, I was able to get the second rocket up and running and doing some research way out there in the star map. And so far, I've already gone and come back to the 30,000 kilometer destination. And currently we are on our way to the 40,000 destination right out here to bring back some nice research. So we're getting closer and closer to liquid oxygen. However, in order to actually power up liquid oxygen, I'm going to need a good amount of power. And that's the one thing that the space base up here currently doesn't have a ton of. Uh, we do have solar panels, which does pretty good, although it takes a lot of batteries because we have to keep that load up over overnight. And when we start to add things on there like thermal aqua tuners and whatnot that we're going to be using to create liquid oxygen, I just don't really have the power capacity to handle all of that stuff right now. So one of the projects that I've been working on here in between these two videos is I've just been connecting the heavy watt wire all the way from the space base up here down to kind of my bane power generation, which is way, <laughs> way down here. My gosh, from a distance, this really does look like spaghetti. Um, but essentially, yes, this one power wire here, this big 50 kilowatt wire runs uh, basically all the way from down here to the top of my map. So everything is now connected. So the power that I generate in space can actually power the rest of my base and vice versa. But the main goal for today is to actually get that molecular forge up and running because I'm going to need a little bit of super coolant so that I can actually use uh, liquid oxygen here in the future. If we take a closer look at my resources right here, I still have 8.7 tons of oxalites, which is really good. These dense puffs have really just been pooping it out like crazy, so uh, it's, I'm keeping up with it. But if I want to expand the rockets and I want to send those rockets further into space, I'm going to need to use liquid oxygen versus oxal over oxalite because uh, the fuel density is a lot better. So I get an extra segment on the rocket Ultimately, it's just better. So we're going to try to get that liquid oxygen up and running. The other thing is that you guys left me a lot of... Okay, so the other project that I'm working on here is tapping into this other aqua tuner I have right here that's underneath my steam turbine. You guys have left me a, a good comment down here saying, please hook up the other space cooling loop that you have right now so that your dupes don't cook to death in the space base. It has gotten a little toasty down here. I was able to actually kind of uh, get rid of some of that heat by using this little icy fan. But you can see Drandolph here. He's not really enjoying it. He's just kind of sad. So far, the only duplicate that I've seen that really actually enjoys running this is Meep. But maybe that's because he's the one that's constantly cooking. Everybody else just doesn't like being here. <laughs> so yes, I'm going to get that liquid loop set up so that it'll actually cool down this space base here and, and keep it nice and chill. Not only that, as we launch off more and more rockets here, that's going to produce a good amount of heat that I may not be able to fully contain within these silos. I have kind of built up some walls here, but you can see the wall over here. Ooh, baby, that's 300 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to be careful. Ultimately, I plan to actually get rid of this and move a lot of these components inside of here, but it's probably not gonna happen anytime too soon. So I might as well get this thing fired up now. So that's what's happening today, and I do have to admit, it's a fair amount of stuff. Oh, and by the way, yes, I did mop up my little liquid lock here. All I did is empty the bottle, and it's back in working condition. I did, however, receive about 30 messages about it. I'm good. We're all good. We're not venting oxygen. Oh, yeah, and just concerning these mesh tiles here, they actually do not vent out the back. So this is airtight. I uploaded a little demonstration of that right here, so you can see how that is venting out because it's going out the sides. However, this one over here is maintaining its pressure. So I know a lot of people were talking about that one as well. No, this doesn't vent out into space. That was actually a change that happened several months ago uh, when they actually added this background behind the pneumatic doors. So those are also airtight as well. However, if you were playing last year, that actually would be venting into space. I believe so it's not like it's wrong it's just the information changed over time so all right so I'm trying to think through how I want to expand this from this area to that area right now I'm relying on the transit tube to get in and out which isn't isn't that big of a deal I can actually just re-enable the door you know where do I want this tube to go deconstructing a lot of stuff we're actually gonna vent a lot of oxygen but I think it'll be worth it just hold your breath me that's all you'll be fine don't worry about it He's already come prepared. Look, he's already got his little Atmo suit and everything. Oh no, these dupes are just going to drag those jet suits all over the place. Ah, terrible plan. 
It's all right. It'll be okay. Let's just quick build these tiles. Do you mind? You can do it. And the background tiles. Everything's priority level nine. All right, there we go. I think just a few more tiles and we'll have that completely solved. Not bad. How's the oxygen in this area? Not too bad. We went down about a kilogram, but we're still at 400. That's very breathable. These dupes moved through that pretty quick. All right, let's at least get the crossing piece done. That's like the one last piece that's venting. <laughs> no, where are you going, bud? You're just running away with the suit. Kitty. So I don't think we're venting to space anymore. So good, we've already expanded the... Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> There's all of this over here. We still need to wall this off. Although we're not really venting oxygen, we're more or less just pushing the carbon dioxide out over here, which is completely fine. But dupes, you keep running away with my jet suits, man. Dupes. Uh-oh, all these suits are just everywhere. No, you're running away with the suit again. How did it, what, Kitty? How did you manage to get an Atmo suit inside of here? Oh, you went out. Grabbed the suit and then came back in right there. Oh man. Okay, you can you can no longer go through those doors, dupes. Nicola. <clears throat> Unequip that thing. Are you serious right now, Nicola? Dude, look at this guy. He gets into a jet suit, flies over here, <laughs> finds this one spot, and watch, he's probably gonna fly right through that. Yes, and go right to the transit tube. He just wants to wear this jet suit everywhere. No no. Nicola, stop doing that. You go back over here. What'd I tell you? Like, you give them one chance to take that jet suit anywhere besides where you want them to go, and that's the first thing they do. All right. We'll build that little tile right there. That should take care of it. Ren. <laughs> These dupes, they're all over the place here. All right, so it seems like everything's up and running. We're doing a pretty good job here. Uh, this smart battery though, this is really not charging up. What's going on here? It is connected to the main power line, which is running a ridiculous amount of power through it every once in a while, but I guess the potential load is 1,006, or shall we say 16,000 watts. Holy moly. Somehow we're drawing 8,000 watts through that thing. The grid, this power grid is such a mystery anymore. Very spaghetti. All right, so I've run out of steam here for this first rocket. I don't really feel like bringing more in, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and deconstruct this stuff and replace it with a nice petroleum system. As we can see, we already have petroleum here, and I have that hooked up to where it's actually fueling up the other rocket. So we'll do the same sort of thing over here as well. So we can just deconstruct that. All right, so I'll put the solid oxidizer right down here, and then I'll put the liquid tank on top there. So I don't really have to move too much. I can just kind of rebuild this rocket as need be. So, we could put the little petroleum engine right down here on bottom. Boosh, look at that. Lose a little bit of steam, but not a big deal. See? Look at that. You can build the rocket a little bit out of order. So that kind of brings me up to the mod that I was talking about last time of potentially being able to build these rockets out of order. And just for the record here, because I'm not really sure what to think about this top comment here, uh, which is, every day you ask for another mod, modders can't keep up. Um, I'm not 100% sure what to think about that. Essentially, what I'm just trying to do here is, is being a soundboard for different ideas. I mean, that's like what my channel is all about, essentially. <laughs> um, and a lot of people share mods with me, so I'd like to actually continue to feature them here within this series. So, just because I'm talking about it doesn't mean that I'm asking you to go and do that. If you want to do it, you can. Great. You don't have to. Don't feel pressured by me to actually go and make these mods. Uh, matter of fact, I found a couple of these other ones you were telling me about down here. Smart Dig by Owen Y. This is a tool that actually allows you to select a certain type of material all within one area right there. So it's pretty close to what I was talking about the other day. That one actually was already out there. I just didn't know about it. So uh, posted on August 25th and recently updated. And then recently, another mod released by the same person is Smart Mop right there, which allows you to kind of mop up uh, pretty much everything that's connected to that liquid run right there. You know how that kind of like wants to chain out. This is a fancy little new tool that kind of lets you mop things up a little bit more strategically. Again, these are sweet little tools that just make the game potentially a little bit more... Uh, no! <gasps> we survived! Ha <laughs> ha! At any rate, most of these mods here are just little quality of life mods. As far as potentially playing the game with other pieces of equipment, I know a lot of mods keep coming out here with different pieces of equipment, like these little tiny batteries. That was something we talked about previously, or kind of all the piped mods for the different pieces of equipment. I'd like to explore that stuff in uh, a little bit 
more depth maybe in a different series, not necessarily this one. But big thanks to all of the people out there that are continuing to make all of these mods. I think it's absolutely awesome, so thank you guys so much for supporting this game and continuing to make all of these sweet tools. But just know you shouldn't feel pressure to go and make more mods just because I mentioned it in the video. You can do whatever you want, I'm just trying to provide some inspiration. Speaking of programming and inspiration for projects right here, there's a new Humble Bundle out there called Level Up Your Python. Now this one will run you through many different video tutorials right there working through projects to actually learn Python and all the other things that they're actually talking about right here. There's also some written references as well. I'm a big fan of video tutorials personally, I think that that connects well with me. So I'm glad to see that there's many of those in this package right here. So if this looks interesting to you, there's going to be a link to it in the description below. As you can see right here, I am partnered with Humble Bundle, so any purchase of any Humble Bundle via the link in the description below will go to help support this channel. It'll also go to help support a couple of great charities such as St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital or the Python Software Foundation. So thank you guys so much for your support and have a wonderful day. Boom! Our other rocket is back with a boatload of research. Welcome back, bud. Floating down. It's interesting when they come out of the um, rocket, they actually have little jetpacks, but you can't see it. I just think it's a, a weird little, a weird little graphical glitch. So what that means is we should have enough research now to go ahead and potentially unlock the liquid oxygen right down here. So I was at 556, which I think is actually going to be a little bit more once we're done with it, but that should have brought back another 250. So if I have 600 on hand right now, then that should be enough to take it up to 800. Invalid build location? What? Dopes? Oh, I can't even cancel this thing. It's broken. Hang on. Is it not broken? No, it's not broken. Dupes just don't know what to do. Come on, man. Give it another try. Pancake King? Nope. Rejected. <sighs> All right, molecular forge time. Mm, I want to build that out of steel. Look at how much steel we have. 11,000. Holy moly. Crap. Look at how big that machine is. All right, it's extra tall. At least I got kind of a spot right there. That one's going to take a lot of juice, isn't it? 1.6 kilowatts. Yeah. My poor, poor power grid. It I can't really keep up. I'm about ready to double down on my shine bug reactor. Hmm. Hmm. Look at this. A salty dwarf? Check that out. Now, ooh, I can get a dash of salt vine seed right there. I actually don't have any of those in my base just yet. Nice. Oh, this is cool. The organic mass that's only 50,000 kilometers away does have a gassy moo and gas grass seeds. So that's cool. Maybe I could potentially ranch gassy moves this time successfully. Last time I did it, eh, it didn't really work out all that good. They died. But, however, I think if I pair them up with shine bugs, it might work better this time. Because last time the grass gas seeds um, just didn't get enough light from space, and the more the moves farted, the more it blocked the sun. Yeah, that's uh, that's legit. That's exactly what it sounded like. We got a red dwarf way out there. Hmm, aluminum, methane, and some fossils, so that's pretty handy. Ooh, 40%. Nice. A couple of those destination, the dash, I can't speak. A couple of those destinations um, seem like some pretty good spots to go. One thing we do have to be aware of is that there's a certain maximum mass and a lower minimum mass right now, and then there's a replenish per cycle sort of thing. So you can't really just send a whole bunch of rockets there all the time, constantly, just to keep farming more and more of these resources. They kind of have a, a certain rate that you can pull from them. So my rocket's setup right now is kind of small scale, so I'm not really depleting any of these locations. But if I were to try to send like a bunch of rockets to this carbon asteroid, we'd just kind of suck all the mass uh, available mass out of it and we wouldn't be actually get any more back at least that's how i understand the system works but i've never actually drawn any of these dry so just a new mechanic to be aware of so kind of just be careful of that stuff man this vole is just pooping all over my new base man <sighs> all right all right let's take a look at this cooling loop have we actually connected everything we needed to connect new no. <laughs> because i never actually plumbed it all the way crap can you imagine that? I got distracted and started looking at something different. All right, there we go. Do, 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 do. Not enough material. What? 
Wow, all right, Igneous. Sorry to use all of you up. Here, yeah, we'll, we'll use Mavic instead. Okay, or maybe not. <laughs> Insulated Wolframite? Yeah, I think I'll pass on that one. Ooh, we're pushing 11 frames per second, 10. Okay, so it only takes 337 kilograms to go 10,000 and back. So that's what I'm going to do here. Three, three, seven. Actually, I'm going to round that up. So it'll be 340. And this one will be 340. I'm just going to start rounding this to the nearest 10th because of the way that the petroleum and stuff actually moves through the pipes. So when you have a um, something that's really cold, you don't really want to have a partial packet moving through the pipe because that partial packet can heat up and burst. And then that causes you some heartburn because you get stressed out. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to make it a habit to round up to the nearest 10th. Maybe that'll help. Maybe. The rest of this stuff, we can get rid of that. We don't need all those gas pipes. Goodbye. Deconstruct the buildings. We don't need that. Just try to clean some of this up a little bit. All right, awesome. I now have a molecular forge here, and I've already got some materials for the supercoolant, which is the primary thing that I want out of this. Supercoolant is really going to allow us to unlock liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. So not only that, it'll be nice and efficient when we go to run it. So sweet. I just need to get some petroleum on hand, which is actually really, really easy to do. You could just set up uh, one dupe to empty the pipe a bunch of times and yeah, it just builds up. We also have insulation here, which is very useful when it comes to dealing with things that are extremely hot, like volcanoes or, or well, I wouldn't say rockets so much. They're actually in, in space. So that's not really a big deal, but yes, that's awesome. Plus we have tons of reed fiber, so that's good from all of our little Drecos and stuff. Although it is five for every 150 units, so maybe I wanna bump that up a little bit. That actually gives us a use for all of the abyssalite we've been able to dig up. And then visco gel is really useful for airlocks and stuff, which is handy because we're in space. Again, we just need a little bit of petroleum there. That's the iso resin as well. So that could be used for insulation or visco gel. Come on, Nicola, you can do it. Come on, buddy. No, oh, yeah, there you go. I already have all of this iron down here, so I'm just going to repurpose it so that I can actually make a heat sink for this petroleum engine. Maybe it'll melt, maybe it won't. All right, so based on an experiment I did in the past called rocket power, uh, what essentially what I want to have is eight different tiles below kind of that main spot right there. So it's nine tiles tall altogether. So that is one more right down here and that should absorb all of the heat that that rocket is putting off right when it goes to launch. So right when this is happening here, you can all see right, that the, the heat heat is actually building up in this spot right there. So right there I'm using some diamond in both of those locations just because it looks extra cool. So the cool thing about this heat sink here is not only can we use it for things like steam, but we can also use it for some higher temperature things as well, such as converting crude oil into petroleum, or we can go even higher than that. So you could potentially get this stuff over a thousand degrees Celsius. So there's some things that you can melt that you wouldn't be able to melt with anything but a volcano. So they're pretty handy. All right, so do you think I can plug this into here and it won't explode? I kind of feel like it's going to explode. Okay, so I'm just going to have to rework the power grid just enough here to potentially plug in this guy to the big heavy watt wire, I think. I don't know, so far that's almost been overdrawn as well, so maybe that's a good idea, maybe it's not. All right, so let's take a look at the temps here inside the space base. We're currently at about 60 degrees Celsius inside there, maybe a little bit hotter in some spots. Ugh. And then that power, crap, come on, man. I tell you what, let's double down on the shine bug reactor. Mm hmm Boom. All right, let's see if I figured out the wire spaghetti. Mm, yes, yes I have. Okay, those jump over that, <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> uh, Drandolf is like, hey man, my job's simple up here. I'm just gonna sit here and run on this little icy fan all day. But now he's hungry, so see you, bud. All right, let's try to get rid of this. Today, I'm just like constantly deconstructing everything. <laughs> oh, who's getting crispy? Nope. Uh, just Nicola, just a little bit, right? I should have enough liquid in this loop here to kind of go and start to fill that up. So this area here still seems a little bit crispy. I should have more than enough liquid here in order to fill that loop. So if I do something like that, that didn't work. 
Mm, all I want to do is seed this thing. Yeah? No? <laughs> no? Not today? Pipes? Help me out. Why is it? Why is it gotta be all weird? There we go. Now the liquid is flowing. So that's going to go up into there. This thing will cool down so long as it is above. Oh shoot, let's just do 50 C to begin with. It's not like I have a ton of power to go around up here. Hopefully this isn't like super hot. It's 79 degrees to begin with. Um, but somewhere down here it's cooler. There you go, it's, it's 69 degrees. Sorry, Mape, I think things are going to be a little crispy for a while. Ooh, these saves are epic. Man, look at that. What are we up to? Ooh, 46 megabytes now. All right, I just wanna make sure that I completely fill up this loop here and then have just a little bit left over in the tank so that the temperatures are always balanced. That's really important when using this aqua tuner here, especially if you wanna have tight control of just how hot the liquid is. So what I'm looking for is when, these co when this content starts to go up and up and up. There we go, 60, 70, 80, 90. Okay, now's a good time to deconstruct that little bit of pipe right there. So I should have one continuous run and uh, about 100 kilograms left over, or 160, perfect. The only thing is I don't have enough power for it, so. Destination beyond reach. What's going on here? Petroleum rocket, oxalite, 10,000. What am I not putting into, into this? 9,740, all right, well, I'll add a little bit more. All right, good deal, that was enough. Boom, and that rocket is firing up. Now if I take a look at the heat there, 300, 400 degrees Celsius, right there in those metal tiles. Mmm, and you can see that I've already put the conveyor rail behind that. Nice, nice. All right, I think that's looking good, so maybe I won't use this second shine bug reactor. I love having lots of shine bug reactors, but I said I wasn't going to do more than one. Okay, woo woo. Well, let's go ahead and make some super coolant. Or uh, as much as I can, actually. Bam, make a ton of that. Now there is a mod that actually has a bottle emptier for liquid that was made here recently. I currently don't have it installed, so actually how I, how I get liquid out of this pipe here for the molecular forge is I'm just going to go ahead and empty the liquid pipe. Boop. <laughs> and then the dupes will come up here and just Bottle up a bunch of uh, petroleum for me right here at the Molecular Forge. All right, so how's the temps inside of the space base? Mm, well, it's still around 60 degrees Celsius. Remember, there's a ton of mass up in here. All of this Mavic Rock, 400 kilograms per tile. Yeah, it's going, it's going to take a while to cool down. If it is indeed even trying to cool down. I think it is. What's the temps on the liquids here? That's at 64 degrees Celsius. Do I need insulation? No. I might just make a little bit of visco gel though. Maybe we'll set that up right there. Oh boy, who's on fire now? My lovely dupe! Sorry, yeah, it is kind of hot over here, isn't it? I mean, it's a little crispy. It's only, what, 80 degrees Celsius? <laughs> Good job though. That's 100 kilograms of petroleum. Look, Kenzilla's not even on fire. He's, he's doing just fine. Just got some of that thick skin. Oh, I lied. All right, two dupes down. How much petroleum do I have now? Mm, 240 kilograms, not bad. All right, that's probably enough for now. <laughs> and some poor dupes going to come down here to run this molecular forge. Ooh, and it's in water too. Not you, Val. Oh, poor Drandolph. Just slightly crispy is all. Hey, whoa, 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 buddy. Your health just went down really fast. Let me go ahead and put you down here. You and... <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, no! Drandolph is down! Oh, poor kitty's going to give it a try now. It's not gonna work out. Keep at it, mate. Good job. Uh, everything else is kind of toasty. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to mop up this water. Hopefully that helps a little bit. <laughs> a very little bit. I do have some visco gel now, though, so let's go ahead and deliver that one. Priority level nine. See, Kitty's not catching fire as fast this time, so that's good. You know, despite everything being incredibly hot, it just takes longer now, that's all. There you go, and maybe maybe the gas flow oh, will actually help a little bit. 
Trying to get rid of that carbon dioxide. What's not helping is all of the stuff that's been deconstructed right here and happens to be about, oh, I don't know, 150 degrees Celsius. <laughs> ah, just give it some time, it'll cool off. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. Don't just keep saying that it'll be fine and eventually it'll become true. <laughs> hmm, that's some interesting decor. Oh, hang on, we got the visco gel there. Boom, just like that, we don't need any more. Good deal. So now we've got this cool little airlock that is currently not really working as an airlock, but it will once I deconstruct and reconstruct everything that I need up here. Some people were asking why it looks like I have less duplicates now. And that's actually because two duplicates are in the rockets. And when they're in the rockets, they don't count up in your total population. So I actually have 18 duplicates rather than 16. So that's the thing about the dupes that are in those those rockets. They're just kind of gone most of the time. Matter of fact, I think you can possibly even store duplicates inside of rockets if you don't want to feed them and stuff. Maybe. There is a, a capsule that actually goes in is sightseeing. I've never actually tried it, but I did have the thought of potentially storing them in sightseeing modules. Especially if you can like just build sightseeing modules around. Store your dupes. I don't know. That's a weird idea. All right, let's make a few of these cool vests for those dupes that really wanna operate equipment a little bit more. More potentially happen to be inside of this nice, awesome, cool space base that we have up here. It's not as fancy as the snazzy suit, but if you don't catch fire spontaneously, I think it's a real advantage. Let's get rid of this, set that to vacancy, and then switch the Jet suit dock to this one and get rid of that one to put one more there. I think I just heard a rocket come back. Nice. See, look at how fast that fills up. Just boom, just like that. So there we go, two more jet suits. Nice. And they've already been connected to the liquid. Good deal. What about the power? Mm, nope, I need to connect them to the power. New. Hey, did you hear that? Got some new research done. So now. I can use the liquid oxygen tank, awesome. So we don't need to rely on oxalite anymore. So the next thing I wanna research, well, this stuff right here. So that's going to be the gas cargo canister. I've never really used that too much, or the liquid cargo canister, but we can also get ourselves the biological cargo bay right there so we can bring back some space critters like gassy moose, or potentially put your dupes in the sightseeing modules. So my dupes that are most likely to spontaneously combust is Strandolf and Kitty. Followed up by Kenzilla, Meep, and Val right here. Uh, because they're going to run over to some equipment and actually start to operate it. And that happens to be where the highest temperatures are inside of my base. So I'm going to try to make a couple of these cool steam ve uh, vests down here to protect them from the heat. 63 degrees. Well, I feel like that's slightly less than where we were. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. Uh. <laughs> How about the temperature that's inside of the tank? That's a good place to look. It's 63 degrees. Okay, well, yeah. It needs a little bit more power, but I think I can give it some more power. I can't fit a solar panel right there, but I, I can slap one down right over here. I think I can slap this solar panel right down here and just straight up connect it to that aqua tuner. It's not going to run that much more, but it's a little something extra. I might click on and off a little bit more often to cool down some liquid. Hmm, let's see. It's kind of a temporary thing until I get this stuff set up. But you can see my dupes, they're not catching fire over here. Dr. Eskimo is just fine. We were able to build up some super coolant too, so that's good. I think we're still venting gas though. A little bit of carbon dioxide, not a big deal. Ren, how in the world did you get down here with a jet suit again? Seriously, how do you keep doing that? And why do you keep taking a piss in it? Can somebody deliver the suit, please? You can't go through there. You can't go through there. Can you fly around this thing? No, no, you can't. <laughs> what? Kenzilla, seriously, is there any way for you to get down here? Yes. What way are you going to get there? No, you go back through the port. Oh, it must have been when I deconstructed the jet suit checkpoint. She decided to run across that. Ah, must have been it. Tell you what, you give them a chance and that's the first thing they do. Okay, so how much super coolant do I have on hand? 300 kilograms. 
That's not bad. Looks like we're just waiting for some more petroleum. So let's go ahead and empty a little bit more out there and try to build up the rest of the super coolant. Actually, I have quite a bit of fullerene, so that's good. All right, Kenzilla, you've got a cool vest. Are you gonna catch fire this time? You're telling me it's hot, but you're not getting hurt. Hmm? No, he's not actually getting crispy, so that's good. Nicholas seems to be doing all right, despite, uh, ooh, ooh. Those temps right there. That's some hot stuff. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait. Somebody's catching fire. Who's catching fire? Me? No! Dude, you don't even have your cool vest on. I just made that for you, bud. Come on back down here. Where'd he go? Oh, man, that guy is so fast. Bam! Don't you look cool. I don't know where all of my jet suits went. <laughs> Assigned, you have an astronaut. Assigned, and you have an astronaut. Where, where are these suits, huh? 350, awaiting delivery. Oh no, we got enough. Watch out, Kenzilla! Oh, buddy! That cool vest, keeping you safe. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Nope, never mind. <laughs> you know what? At least we put the hospital right next to the transit tube point. Way to think ahead. Do, do it. What are you doing, Pancake King? Are you delaying? <laughs> Look at this dude. Look at this dude. What are you? What are you doing? I don't. What am I even gonna do with these guys? <sighs> Send help. At any rate, that's all I got time for today. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you again next time. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Mrothgar out.